Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our July 12th, 2023 regular meeting of the Moni Village Board of Trustees. 633. Um, if I could please have Pastor Dave Fettis come up for the invocation. Thank you, Mayor. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for your blessings that every good gift comes from you. We thank you for the gift of life and health. We thank you that recently our nation could again celebrate independence and the freedoms and opportunities that we enjoy. We pray that you'll continue to guide and watch over and bless our nation and our state. And tonight we pray especially for uh, this community of Moni. We thank you for the people who live here, for the businesses and people who work here. We pray for the families and children and all those who are educators here in Moni. And we pray that each one may be blessed by your hand. And we thank you for the people in this room and for those who serve as trustees for our mayor. We thank you for those who work in administration and in the park districts and all the other activities. We thank you for those who are involved in law enforcement and um, first responders and people who care for the safety and well-being of our community. We ask your blessing and protection for each one that the people of this village and community can thrive. We thank you too for providing rains to um, refresh the gardens and lawns and the crops and pray that you'll continue to provide for the needs of everybody. And we now ask your blessing on this meeting tonight, that you will give your wisdom, that you will give a sense of fairness and justice, and that all the discussions can be constructive, that those involved can listen carefully to each other, and that the decisions made will be pleasing to you and good for this community. We pray for your hand of blessing to be on our community too spiritually, that people may know you as the living and true God, and may receive your blessings in Jesus Christ. We pray in his name. Amen. Amen. Roll call, please. Trustee Gonzalez. Here. Trustee Horn. Here. Trustee Henson. Present. Trustee Rakis. Present. Trustee Wilson. Present. Trustee Udris. Present. Open to the public, agenda items only. Moving on to the consent agenda, may I please have a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Horn. Yes. Trustee Hanson? Yes. Trustee Rakes? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. And moving on to the clerk's report. Thank you, Mayor Bogues. Really quick, just want to let everybody know, I know with the weather being nice out, that there have been a lot of more uh, companies out going door to door, kind of rolling around on the scooters and everything. I've gotten um, some, not necessarily complaints, but some of the residents reaching out, trying to see if they were authorized, and they also kind of show their badge. Just wanted to remind anyone, if you are concerned at all, um, to contact dispatch and let them know. They'll definitely check. Of course, if I see them, I do check myself as well. But I appreciate all the residents for reaching out and being concerned for the other residents. End the report. Thank you. Okay, moving on to my report. Tonight we've got discussion slash approval um, regarding awarding the construction management contract. So at the previous two board meetings, core construction on June 14th and PSI on June 28th have given overview presentations showcasing their respective company's history and experience regarding construction management services for several projects. They also shared their capabilities of providing professional services to the village regarding the construction management responsibilities of the village's proposed town center. Therefore, I'm respectfully requesting the board's approval to enter into a professional service agreement with one of the two firms for the construction management of the town center. Mayor, at this, Mayor, at this time, I'd like to motion uh, for PSI. And I'd like to second. Okay discussion please and I will say too this was a tough decision um, for the two of them because we know and have witnessed projects from both you know these well-deserving companies um, but I too um, think PSI is a well cho a good choice I like the idea of uh, a local 
a more local company. Um, I, th I don't see a value add by using a, a larger company. I think uh, these are, PSI is uh, relatively a hometown uh, company. I'd like to, I would like to award the contract to them. Okay. Roll call, please. Trustee Hansen? Yes. Trustee Rikus? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Thank you, board. Uh, moving on to the administrator's report. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. First item under my report is a market study proposal. As the village continues its efforts to recruit new businesses to the community, a main focus has been locating a grocery store development for the town center. One of the necessary tools is having an updated market study in hand for potential developers. The last market study completed for the village was in 2014, conducted by Dakota Worldwide Corporation. The study focused on potential grocery store development and identified Moni's location as being in a food desert. Over the past nine years, the market has changed significantly, especially in the eastern Will County region. As we develop the town center, we will need to share with developers an updated study a current market analysis, feasibility assessment, a gap report which reveals the existing retail landscape in the village, evaluate the economic impact of a grocery store development in the village, and provide an investment attraction for potential investors and financial institutions. Therefore, we would request to enter into a professional service agreement with Dakota Worldwide Corporation to conduct a market analysis for a potential grocery store in the town center including a gap report <coughs> for potential stores and products. Board action requests is a motion to approve the mayor to sign a proposed professional service agreement with Dakota Worldwide Corporation to conduct a market analysis and gap report in the amount of $16,000 and zero cents. I'll make that motion. Second. Discussion? Yes. Uh, go ahead, John. Yep, go ahead. Go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just uh, two two things. I'm looking at the um, proposal submitted by Dakota, and I am noticing too um, for this, and this is the same organization that did the analysis in 2014, and they are in Wisconsin. And being that we've done a comprehensive plan, what do we hope um, proving that? what we already know that this, you know, our comprehensive plan includes the plans for a grocery store. Um, what additional information do we hope to glean that we can sh show developers from another market study? Thank you, Trustee Gonzalez, that's a great question. So the study will give us an updated, um, updated data for what the current population is, what the uh, annual income is, uh, the average for the village, what the jobs that are offered in this area, what those jobs are and what they're paying. It's going to um, provide an overview to a potential grocery store developer that wants to look, that's looking for an area to develop what's available here in this town. Why should we come to Moni? And this was one of the first questions we were asked. We were approached, and it's no secret now, by Jewels Corporation. It's one of the things they wanted in hand was a market study they want to know it correct so in just a little bit of background on Dakota Dakota has, has done one in 2005 for the village 2007 the third one was in 2014 so they have a great overview in history with the village and so a lot of it is just catching up now the last nine years but they have they know our geographics, they understand, they, they're well aware of the village from our partnership. So they're gonna be in the area actually in the next month. And so it was a perfect timing because they will grab a hotel, stay here for days and deep dive into this, um, this research should the board approve this contract. That's kind of the background, but, but we're being asked when we met with PSI and with uh, Core Construction those are the first questions I asked. You guys have your market study, an updated one, can you provide it to us? So this is just a tool that, that we need to move forward. And once that development starts, um, which I don't want to jump ahead, um, but we are in negotiations with um, 
developer at our town center. And once the earth starts moving, things are going to ratchet up. It's just going to generate even more interest. So I hope that answered your question. It did. And again, just so I can make sure that I'm on the same track too, this marketing study actually goes more in depth into what you know what the businesses can expect customer want customer base wise what kind of income and all that the comprehensive plan really more shows what our thoughts and wants are you know it doesn't really dive down into those kind of those those statistics correct it, did both. it, it does but this will delineate uh, potential customers what are they looking at here in the village? What does the village have to offer as far as a customer base to a development? So like rooftops and demographics of the people who live here, what other kinds of businesses are already here, and how far do we have to drive to get to one? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Ages, who, who is the population that they would be serving, what are their trends? Um, all of that would go into this report. So th is that going to determine what store comes here? Is it, is it, is it, um, I guess I'm unsure as to why prior there was no move for it with the population growth that we've had from 2014, 7, and 05. Is it because we now have a town center and it's going to start being utilized? Because business-wise, I would think, well, everything's moving. So let's get in now. Is, is that more the background with it? Well, that, that's part of it. Uh, if you remember in 2008, there was uh, a home, the home market crashed. And so building stopped. And so it, it, none of this would have really made sense then to, to build at that point. So there was a, a a lull in that time period for a development like this to take place. Since the village has purchased this acreage, this has uh, in the market, you know, we're hoping we'll move, continue to move in a positive direction. I think there was a report that came out today, if I'm not mistaken, uh, a market report and inflation is actually tending to drop. That's a good sign. We're hopefully we're going in the right direction. So our job is really to prep ourselves, put ourselves in that position and be ready. Thank you. Roll call, please. Trustee Rakes? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Hanson? Yes. Thank you, board. Next item is Professional Service Agreement, Farnsworth Group. As the village continues to develop its open green space locations, one village-owned parcel has been scheduled for fiscal year 2024 park development. This 7.75 acre parcel is located in the Gorman Farm subdivision and has been long overdue for a recreational overhaul. Developing Gorman Farm's open space into a community park is another great recreational opportunity for the village and will add much needed acreage development to the overall Moni Comprehensive Parks Plan. Developing open green space is an important component when being considered for the Illinois Department of Natural Services Open Space Land Acquisition Development, or OSLED grant. In order to develop this park project, it will take a capable engineering firm to provide engineering and landscape architectural design services. Therefore, we would recommend that the village enter into a professional service agreement with Farnsworth Group to accomplish the scope of services outlined in the attached proposal. Board action requested is a motion to approve the mayor to sign the proposed professional service agreement with Farnsworth Group to provide engineering and landscape architectural design services for a fixed fee of $10,000 and zero cents. Uh, so moved. Second. Discussion. This will, and again, I'm catching up being out of town, but this, this will take care of the issue that we had brought up um, at a previous board meeting concerning that uh, the grass that accidentally got mowed, that and that will be incorporated into into this plan, correct? Mm -hmm. Protect yes, it. But yes, sir. And correct me if I'm wrong. We don't currently have a park on the west side of 57 in Moni. No, correct. Yeah. Roll call, please. Trustee Wilson. Yes. Trustee Udris. Yes. Trustee Gonzalez. Yes. Trustee Horn. Yes. 
Trustee Hansen? Yes. Trustee Rakes? Yes. Thank you, board. Item number three under my report is going to be pulled for tonight. Uh, the requesters have requested a little bit more time to work on their party request. So we'll be moving to item number four. This is 5510 West Court Street. The last item under my report is a presentation by our economic development director, Bill, I almost said Brown, <laughs> Bill Barnes regarding the village's property located at 5510 West Court Street. This is another parcel that is scheduled for green space overhaul during fiscal year 2024 and is located in the entryway of our commercial district, nestled in the northeast quadrant at the Court Street and Governor's Highway intersection. So Bill, without further ado, okay. it's all yours. Close out of this. I'm trying. Okay, working on it. Okay, so a few months ago, um, I think I had a few boards up here for not only this location, but another. I'll open this up a little bit. So, and then I have the board over here. So just at the northeast corner of Court and Governor's Highway, uh, we have green space that we've had for a few years that we would like to develop into a memorial park um, for first responders, military. And so what you're seeing here is um, actually design that I worked with with uh, one of the bidders, which is Tunzi and Sons out of based in Piatone. They've done, you know, they work locally. They've done some things local in Frankfurt and such. Um, so what, you, well, if I can talk. So again, Governor's Highway is on the right. Court Street is across the top. So these would be paver blocks that people could buy, you know, with their names of loved ones, uh, uh, lost military members and what have you. So that's just, that would re be recouping. At the very end is, of course, uh, parking spaces would be one handicap spot and two um, additional spots because that's all there's room for. It's actually 20 by 40 length. Um, everything there is new growth. Um, it would be sodded. It would be uh, irrigation system. So it would be connected to obviously water. So making it look all nice and green. Um, the other thing that you're, uh, if I could get like right in here, this wall would be a, um, a six foot high wall of a waterfall cascading down. Um, on the back side of it would be military emblems kind of in bronze across like they have at the uh, Abe Lincoln um, uh, Cemetery. Um, and then flagpoles, which aren't included in the bid. Um, so, and then the uh, the tall evergreens at the, at the I guess at the, uh, be the mm, sorry, I'm thinking the north side of this are actually there is kind of a block for this pole barn that's sitting there now. So, um, so a place for people to go in, sit. We would have benches here as well. You see a few, we could add some. Um, so it's really a way of enhancing the kind of the gateway coming down kind of the main street. And then in the spring, then we would address the opposite side of the street where we purchase that house, which will come down. So there's a lot of things that have to happen there. So that's why we're only talking about this particular park today. <clears throat> um, the cost, um, I did, so I have cost for two um, uh, landscapers, one Tunzi and Sons in Piatone, and then the other is Arts Landscaping in Bourbon A. Um, I did reach out and talk several times with uh, Santa Fe. Um, he's really swamped and he was trying to get a hold of his irrigation person, but I didn't get anything from him. So I kept pushing, trying to get a third. So the two bids I have, um, 139,370, I think it's on this on the agenda as well. As you see, that's from Tunzi and Sons. And then, so they're very close. And then the other is 139.9 from Arts Landscaping and Bourbon A. So they would start because of, we wouldn't want to start planning something in the middle of August. So this would actually start beginning of September, cooler weather. So, and, and it's really a month long project with everything. This does not include bringing in water for the irrigation system or the waterfall or a little bit of lighting for the lights um, shining up in the flagpoles. So that's in addition to parking spaces. Actually, I want to get another bid. I got one bid from Iroquois Paving. It's a lot higher than I, I don't know asphalt, but it was $26,000, which 
I'm honestly, we might be able to continue the paver blocks down and make the whole thing paver, but I'd have to get a sep another bid for that. But standalone for the landscaping itself, 139,370 is the lower bid, and 139,924 is the other with arts landscaping. Any questions? Yeah, Bill. Uh, you said that this doesn't include the, the, the flagpoles. Um, I think In the second uh, estimate here, it does include the flagpoles on it. Okay. So I'm wrong in that then. If um, you look on, the, on page three, it says... Um, I see that. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, the, other, the first one's not installing the flagpoles, but the second one is for right around the same amount of money? It seems like it. Yeah, you're right. Something we might want to look at. Uh, yeah. It's a lot of... A lot yeah. extra. Yeah. If I can jump in real quick. Sure. If, so on that first one under Tunzi, mm -hmm. where it documents water source and electric to monument provided by others and flagpole. Right. By others. And so as Trustee Henson points out as well, so they do install both. And the difference being, was it we had 700, 650, somewhere in there? So can we get a flagpole and water source for 650? Just I don't know if, um, if you have any idea what those would go for, but that's for board consideration. I think in looking at that, that with three it says three flagpoles uh, alone right there, and that, that difference in in money plus part. Yeah, so I have no idea how much because he has it included in the second one in arts. With mulch as well, I think. Is that right? Yeah, he's got everything included. So, so I, yeah, I could find out what flagpoles cost. I have no idea, honestly. I missed that. Anything else? What's the ballpark, do you think, for, you said it was 29000 or 26000 for asphalt? Yeah. And the other option is bricks? I mean, I'm just, I'm throwing it out there. We could do cement. We could get another bid, honestly. I just got one bid because Iroquois paving is, that's what right. I know. Um, so we could get other bids on the, I mean, again, it's not very big. It's 20 by 40, so it's not that big. And that includes parking parking blocks, which are going to are three or four plus striping. So I think cement's going to be more than. It could be. And yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, paper blocks may be even less expensive. Just to continue that look down. Um, from what I'm told, you know, when I asked the landscaper, they said, "Yeah, you can park on them, but just the base is a little bit different than a walkway, probably with crushed gravel and that type of thing." Thank you, mm -hmm. Bill. I know we've uh, kind of joked around about this, but I am serious about having incorporating either on this project or the one that'll mirror it on the opposite side uh some piece of military hardware mm -hmm. i don't know if that how hard those are to come by these days i remain i mean most of those what you see you know driving around in the suburbs mm -hmm. were installed in the 50s when the the government was giving right surplus hardware away mm -hmm. but i would appreciate you looking into that at least Actually, investigating yeah that. when i was in california visiting my daughter a few months ago um i was at the like the military base or something and they had three I think I don't remember the number I was in the military, but they were smaller like guns that for from a ship that were I think appropriate for that size of so and I think we have somebody in public works that is like can access that type of thing. So yeah. It's nothing that's had been forgotten about. And I, I honestly had put it put it at that corner, um, at court and um, governor's highway, um, which would be maybe here. Yeah, so it's more visible, but yeah. Anything else? No. So I'll find out if they can, or no, like with the cost of the flagpoles, if they'll include them or just. And to John's point too, the um, it does very clearly say on that on arts on that last page too that it does um, prevailing wages RPZ and water tap installed by certified plumber or village at additional cost electric and water supply provided by village at their cost Correct. so uh, that would be even according to both but it's obviously maybe just the flagpoles that might be different 
And then too, I was going to say is this on our 23 fall of 23 project list, they can get it done this year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, both said it would take the project would take a month. A month. Okay. Yeah. And then I know there's grass there. It's not good turf. It so all comes out. it all so comes out. It all be sodded. And, and that's where the irrigation be. goes under. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause there so. was a house there. There's so probably there's water right there. I'm sure. Yeah. And there's that didn't electric come out, right? right across it's the, uh, We're, it's right, right. stub. Yeah. So it's very close. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's not going to cost a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do, you don't need a yay or nay right now on which one to go with if we're going to wait on that extra cost, right? Okay. We can and do we a motion to uh, postpone. I'll make that motion. Second. I'll sec. Trustee Yudris? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Henson? Yes. Trustee Rakes? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Thank you, board. End of my report. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Moving on to the officials' reports. Public Works, Trustee Horn. Good evening, everyone. Just a few dates to keep in mind. Uh, out of our Public Works Department, our village-wide branch pickup is scheduled for Monday, July 17th. And beginning on that Monday, the 17th, uh, we'll start um, water main and hydrant flushing. Uh, that'll run through Friday, July 28th, and um, that's subject, of course, to the weather, and there'll be signs which will be out in the parkways and the, uh, along the road, so you can be aware of that. They're always put out 24 hours in advance. Uh, we still are looking to fill two full-time labor positions in the Public Works Department. So you can go online, villagemoni.org slash jobs for more information. What I like, uh, what we have in place now with uh, HR and so forth is somebody can start as a labor, laborer and if they're willing to learn and get the certifications, they can move right on up. There's no ceiling on how far they can go. So that could turn into very easily some somebody uh, 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 takes a position and they can make it a career. And lastly, uh, you've seen our beautiful um, park pavilion that's up now, and you notice there's no grass around it. Well, that should change tomorrow, weather permitting. They're going to start doing the seating tomorrow, or if not tomorrow, the next day, or whenever the weather is uh, conducive to that. So just be aware of that, and then uh, that should be all finished then. So end of report. Parks and Recreation, Trustee Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. Um, for everyone's information, this past Saturday, of course, was Kids Day. Thank you to McDonald's, um, Mayor Therese Bogues, DDS, uh, South Holland Meadows, M&J Underground, New Life Physical Therapy, um, Animal Wellness Center of Moni, Shoops, Midwest Customs, and Moni Tobacco for their generous donations and contributing to this event. And despite the rain, everyone did really have a great time. Um, I think the parents were um, just getting soggy and the kids couldn't care less. So um, <laughs> a big hit was the, the, the bubbles machine or the soap machine as it um, was getting, it was, it was awesome. Yeah. And tonight's Movie in the Park is sponsored by Animal Wellness Center of Moni featuring Jumanji. Um, it'll be under the pavilion or frankly inside depending on where the weather goes and the radar goes and it's being watched at this time. Uh, July 18th is our third party in the park at Potawatomi Park from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Free do hot dogs and jumpies and water balloons and more. So come out to Potawatomi on uh, the 18th. Wednesday, July 19th is our Senior Expo. Caregivers and seniors can come and meet with businesses and organizations who have helpful information regarding our seniors. Free lunch will be available and it is free to attend 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Fireman's Park building on the 19th. And July 26th, July 26th is a big day for Parks and Rec. We're hosting a ribbon cutting for our new Fireman's Park Pavilion. Um, join us under the pavilion at 5.30 with live music, popcorn, and treats, and then stay for movies in the park featuring storks at dusk. And um, Parks and Rec today, we found out, has been awarded the, um, the American Rescue Plan Act grant for $30,000, $366 to go towards hiring new staff 
very specific amount um, using the the Will County SLRF um, funds and also the um, one other thing that I wanted I'll come back um, th I know there was one other thing but end of report okay. thank you Heidi finance trustee Regis thank you mayor I have no report okay that was quick economic development trustee Wilson yes thank you mayor so under Unite Moni, second place church is planning a block party to bring together Moni residents and bring attention to the community project on Main Street. Director Bill Barnes is still continuing to work with developers in reference to developing the Moni Manhattan Governor's Highway Corridor um, and entertaining potential businesses. Under Magnify Moni, we have, as we have already heard, Director Bill Barnes is working uh, to get landscaping uh, to our new Memorial Park and also trying to uh, think of uh, other alternatives in, in the future of what we're going to do with our green space uh, also with the Gorman Farms because uh, as we identified in the comprehensive plan as the village administrator stated that it's an important piece to obtaining the Oslo grant and, and getting funds to have that green space available to the residents. So. As always, shop money when available. And a report, Mayor. Thank you. Yeah. Building Services, Trustee Henson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, 85 uh, permits were issued for the month of June. Uh, 278 in total issued for the first half of 2023. Uh, 30 properties are scheduled for occupancy inspections. That's 117 in total for the uh, first half of 2023. 39 additional contractors registered. That's 351 in total for the first half of 2023. Uh, there are still uh, property owners slash landlords uh, who have not renewed their licenses. Uh, please note that uh, they're now past due and late notices were mailed out last week and we are hoping uh, hoping for prompt compliance oh there it goes now it's working <laughs> uh, reminders uh, residential reminders uh, please place your trash and uh, recycling totes uh, out of the public site by 7 p.m. on the day that uh, trash is picked up also Republic will uh, only allow uh, pickup of one large item a week uh, it's recommended that you inform Republic prior to so they can schedule accordingly and uh, Please do place items uh, for pickup uh, on the street. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, now that we have uh, finally had so, uh, seen some rain, the grass will actually be growing again. Um, please continue to maintain your properties, cutting, uh, cutting to your lot lines, uh, as well as any real estate that is uh, adjoining and abutting the property line uh, of the said real estate, and uh, to improve the area of uh, dedicated and then to improve the area of dedicated uh, right of ways so also as an addition when you do cut your grass please don't put it out on the road motorcyclists don't like that and it's gonna very dangerous and gonna hurt somebody so please don't do that end of report thank you uh, public safety trustee Udris. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, a couple things. Uh, first off, uh, wanted to uh, mention that Monday uh, the 17th at 6 p.m. here, I'm going to have a uh, committee meeting. Um, Moni uh, Fire Protection District has, is in the process of purchasing a new engine. They've asked us for some assistance. This is uh, going to be a committee meeting to talk about what we can do to, to help them, what's available, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully get something together that we can work with them on. Um, Randy, do you have a report of anything? I sent it to you. I didn't get it. <laughs> no report. We have to grab it next meeting. All right. So no report for EMA this, this time. Uh, for Moni Police Department, first thing I wanted to mention, uh, Tuesday, August 1st, from 7 to 5, from 5 to 7.30 at the Moni Reservoir is going to be the National Night Out for Law Enforcement. 
uh, bring the family, come on out, music, games, activities, food, child IDs, and much, much more will be going on out there. It's a great way to show our support for our, for our law enforcement, uh, get to meet them up front. I'm sure Cap will be out there uh, for everybody to see as usual. So it's, and it is a great night, a uh, great night for the family. So I hope to see a lot of people out there for that. And finally, for uh, Moni Police Department, um, just want to take a second to uh, offer a welcome back to Sergeant Cash. Um, Brent's been, uh, is an extremely dedicated veteran who's been literally been losing his mind over waiting for the opportunity to return since his injury. Um, he's also jumped back into, into his profession at full speed and is very excited to take on some new, new duties. Uh, Moni Police Department is very fortunate to have you. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate your support too. End of report. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Scott. Uh, moving on to the attorney's report, Larry. Thank you, Mayor. I have three items for the board's consideration. The first item, if the board recalls, uh, we put this property, Moni Manhattan Road and Governor's Highway, out for bid. The bids were due July 7th. It was duly published in the uh, local paper. Uh, the only bid we received was from Primex. Uh, it would be appropriate this time to recognize uh, through a motion that we received only one bid on this site. You need a motion for that? Yes. I'll make that motion. Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Henson? I, I don't have any paperwork on that. Is anybody else? Uh, I don't think there was any, because we didn't receive any proposals on that from Primax. Present. <laughs> Trustee Rakes? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. The next item. Primax, they're the ones that have put the bid in. Uh, we just received information, I believe on Monday, uh, that they are, um, uh, they want to amend their proposal for that site. I know uh, Bill has worked on it quite a bit, along with Ruben, uh, but there is no final agreement. So at this point in time, it'd be uh, appropriate to uh, table uh, to the next board meeting to see if we receive their amended proposal. May I have a motion to postpone? I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Henson? Yes. Trustee Rakes? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. The last item I have is a proposed redevelopment agreement by and between uh, the village and leader properties. I know Matt is here tonight. Uh, to give some background on this project, uh, this is a site where BC Development used to own and they sold it to Mr. Leader, I say two or three years ago. Uh, Mr. Leader has just recently determined or found out that there's substantial infrastructure that has to be done. Uh, if the board recalls, there's always been a flooding issue over there. And Mr. Leader did receive a proposal to, a limit, to alleviate this flooding and the price was roughly $1 million, a little more than that. Um, he is asking the board to help him through this process by using TIF funds. Uh, it is in TIF number three. It does qualify, obviously. He will build on lots four and five, so that would be fully developed then. What we've talked about with Mr. Leader is the village would, if th this agreement calls for an 80% uh, payout to Mr. Leader. Um, he also has agreed that in the event he sells it within five years, he'll pay us back incrementally. And it's not paying us back, it'll go into the TIF. It's not our money, it'll go into the TIF. Uh, he has made the general representations that we've asked for all the time with respect to environmental, uh, the, the usual that we have in there. He's also indicated um, that if we're successful, if the board recalls, we hired Tesca to, move, to try to move three parcels from TIF three to TIF five. This is one of the parcels, because this TIF's set to expire. We indicated that if we are successful in doing that, we'll revisit this agreement. It doesn't mean that uh, we have to negotiate any further, but we'll revisit it. And uh, 
Again, this property has been, uh, that was subject of a lawsuit about a year ago, if the board recalls. So there's been a long history here and Mr. Leader is trying to take the bull by its horns and address this issue. The reason he's asking for it quickly is that TIF 3 is about to expire and he's not getting enough increment from there to pay uh, anything back to us presently. So um, Mr. Leader is here. If you want to come and address the board, Mr. Leader, and if I miss something, introduce no. yourself and let the board know what you're trying to do there. And <coughs> Well, thanks for summing that up for me, Larry. And no I'd problem. like to thank everybody for the opportunity and Reuben and Bill for and Shannon and Romy and everybody else that helped me get to this point. Um, so like you said, obviously I bought Ridgeland Industrial Center a few years ago and my main goal was to finish the development and then I started running into all these issues in the back of lot four and five. Um, lot one is plot ready, ready to go for a foundation and it has a retail lo layover. It's zoned M1, but it has retail layover, but I wanted to leave that for last and work with you guys to see if you had any suggestions on what you'd like to see there, if you could do any kind of market studies or something, see if it's there for retail or we do smaller flex spaces with a uh, retail layover where they could sell out the front. Um, but that's ready to go, so I want to leave the best for last and jump in back, especially with the urgency of TIF 3 coming to an end. So it's, it's taken me about a year and a half to get to this point of all the engineering. I've already designed uh, both buildings on lot four, which would be about 21,600 square feet, and lot five is 27,000. So um, we, if I could start with this PowerPoint, here's some of the, the numbers. So currently, um, there's 75,000 square feet already all fully occupied. And the, the property taxes are 116000 between the two buildings on lot two and lot three. So lot one's still vacant, plot ready, ready to go. Lot four and five, obviously, we have those issues that need to be addressed. Um, but I, I don't see it being that big of an issue. If we, we have the right contractors and... I have nine businesses there now. So by adding those other two buildings in back and the building in front, we'd be adding about another 66,500 square feet. And it would be adding, I mean, right now it employs anywhere from 50 to 75 people. Every day that are there, I'd be looking to pretty much double that, maybe 40 to 50, 40 to 60 more employees. And then the additional tax revenue off those three buildings would be $94,000. So, um, I got some pictures on here. That's the new sign that we added. We put all our tenants' names on front. As obviously, we still need a little bit of work. We got to run uh, the electric to it and finish the landscaping to it. But those are the current buildings that are up right now that are fully occupied of the 75,000 square feet. So then, when I bought the building in back, like right now, obviously with the rain in it, it's a river back there. The detention's supposed to stay dry. It, it's a pond and the water's just going straight across the pavement. But when I got it, it was a complete jungle. That's a picture of what it looks like now. And I was able to, I know all, BC already had all the infrastructure already in the ground. So I was able to clear off all the vegetation, get all the engineering done, and then that's an overview of the whole development. So you can kind of see lot one has the parking lot in and has its slab ready. But these, this is the 3D renderings that I had uh, made from the ideal design architect out of Frankfurt, Illinois. He designed the buildings for me, but that's an overview of what it would look like at the end. But for right now, obviously with the economy slowing down and interest rates going pretty much tripled since I started this. Um, I'm looking to just do it responsibly in phases. And in phase one, I would like to take care of all the water issues back there, redo the det retention. It's actually gonna be a detention. We gotta take about 1,000, 12,000 12, cubic yards, 1,000 truckloads of clay out of it to get the volume and then we're running culverts from our neighbor 
from Rainbow Farms, which is now Vortman Steel dual culverts to take on any kind of water to keep it from going over the pavement. So that would actually be um, lot four pulling in. And then, so the front's office, it's about 30% office, and then the back is industrial warehouse, about 70% warehouse and it's actually mirroring the two buildings that we have there now and then this is <coughs> the site grading plan showing the two buildings but as of right now obviously we would fix the detention run these two culverts and put the base down for the future if you know obviously I don't plan on going anywhere but if something would ever happen to me it's set up for the next person we're gonna run all the infrastructure utilities and put the base down for the for the future for these two buildings. Can I interject for a second? You said that the lot that you mowed down that was flat, that you took the grass off of, you said that the drainage tile was already done? The, the infrastructure in back and lot four and five, they put all that in previous in 2006, right before the crash of 08 and it's pretty much been abandoned ever since. So we were cutting down major trees and everything. So so that land just needs the clay or th it's there? So the clay, m most of the major earth moving has already been done, except for unfortunately the retention wasn't built big enough in the first place, the volume. So that's where the big water issue comes for taking all the clay out of there. We don't need to add any clay to the actual lots where the buildings are going, but we need to put down about a 10, 12 inch base for all of, so we would be trucking in all of the gravel and everything to put the base down for right now and hoping to use it in outdoor storage for the tenants, which I had a tenant already, Hamilton Containers, that was looking to storage containers back there and when I bought it, they had a big pile of asphalt grindings that they were just going to put that down. But I don't want to go in reverse at all. I'm looking to move forward and looking at longevity. So that's when I started all the engineering. And you have no plans on going anywhere? Nope, I do not. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Is there any more questions? Are you going answer? Man, I, I have one question. I was just thinking, normally what we do and what the agreement calls for is that we pay out when there's receipts for work being done. Yep. Are you, will you be able to do that? Yes. Okay, so you'll be able to bring in lien waivers, and then we get the lien waivers, we review it, and at a, a, a board meeting we'll pass it to reimburse you. Sounds good. Yes, that's the plan. Okay. So as long as I have agreement that I could bring to the bank, Showing that, you know, that's the agreement. They'll have no problem funding the okay. project. Okay, yes, sir. And I know you said you didn't plan on going anywhere. That eighty percent, so that's of the one million. Mm -hmm. So you're at eight hundred thousand. If I may, Chuck, that eighty percent, we're giving him, not giving him. That's that's the wrong way of saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Eight hundred thousand dollars. His re initially is a million dollars, but we he negotiated. We negotiated to eight hundred thousand dollars, and what I try to put in there, if he does move out, is twenty percent per year he pays back to us. That's that was thank you. Okay, and that again, it's to the TIF because it's not our money. Uh, it's going to the TIF, and then if the TIF expires, what we can do is probably pay the tax and district proportionately. So and that. That was good of Matt to agree to that because. Uh, and how long do we have this 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 TIF three four? Well, January twenty four, and we don't see anything coming down the horizon, uh, Trustee Rakes, with respect to other development. Uh, that's why we're trying to transfer this site, uh, Vortman site, and a warehouse over to TIF number five. And M1 small manufacturing? Correct. Thank you. Yeah, Matt, uh, 
quick question for you. I'm just just for my own knowledge. How how did we get here? Like, was it an unforeseen or, or a bad survey? Or so, I mean, I did know that there was a water issue back there, and there was a lawsuit. So it it came up at closing. So I had to make a choice to absorb mm -hmm. it or dissolve it. And of course, I dissolved it, wanting to work with the village. And um, but yeah, a little background history of me. That's all I've been in is construction since high school. So I went through a school to apprenticeship. First through third hour, I would build a house and get credit for it. And then I went straight to a union company from there, part time, and then graduated that whole summer from junior senior year. I was full time, and then graduated a half year early senior year. Did my whole five year apprenticeship with them. And then I actually started leader construction and was building spec homes by the time I was 20 years old. And then 08 happened and um, that's how I became a landlord because instead of losing them, I started you know, renting them. And then I, after the crash, there was no housing left, so they put me in the refineries. So then that's how I got into industrial. So the last job I was at was Lion Dell um, in Morris. It was a chemical plant. I was a steward out there. So I'm the first guy on the job. We'd set up all the scaffold for craft support. And so that brings me back to Amex Neuter is one of, it's a national tenant, big credited tenant that I have. And they also could use the lay down area for the outdoor storage right now. So right now I have a, an opportunity to bring in a little additional revenue as we slowly keep moving forward with Hamilton containers, with the boxes, and then with Amex. You know, I started a trucking company actually, industrial trucks, was, which was only transportation in the refineries. And that's how I started doing business with Amex Neuter a long time ago. We would rent the trucks to them for their guys for transportation in there. So sometimes they're, they're a turnaround ends, they might have 30 trucks, 40 trucks come off site. And unfortunately, when they first moved in, first thing that happened, somebody cut off all the catalytic converters on their truck. Mm. So at night, now they have to bring all the trucks in. We have cameras, everything set up. And that was the only issue I've, I've had. But within the back, it's, it's about six feet down from everything else. It's very excluded. The Hamilton containers had a special use permit to stack his connexes three high. And he's had them back there since. You, they're not visible from any of the neighbors or roads. So I just see this as a good opportunity, especially with TIF three ending. And that's a good reason why I jumped him back. Thank you so much, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys. Hey, I do have a question for you. Um, first of all, compliments on the sign, because I'm up and down the all the time I live over on that side. Of 57, so the sign was just amazing, very. It, it looks you. good, yeah. Um, okay. Truck traffic to the facility, what are you talking? Very m minimum. I okay. honestly, I, I don't want the trucks there myself. They constantly cause damage. Turning around mm -hmm. on my front lot, I don't know if you guys ever noticed that, but you could see how many times they put those big rocks there, those boulders. Mm -hmm. I mean, just this last week, they hit one, dragged it all the way 500 feet across, used the curb to get it off, hit the other boulders into the fire hydrants and back. But even the Connex trailers, they just get pulled with like F-350s and low boy trailers. So it would be minimum and it would be more outdoor storage. I don't want the semis coming and going either because it just tears everything up, right. the parking lot and everything as well. Okay. Thank you. Do you mean more like when those 12,000 pounds need, or yards need to go out, that's truck traffic though, is that what you mean? No, just okay. in general right. with the businesses and the, the use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Time wise, to get that done? So we are ready to go actually right now because I needed to do something for my tenants for Hamilton as it was. And like I said, the grindings and everything was back there, but I'm very confident that we just finished all the engineering. We went back on three revisions. So I'm pretty sure all the engineering's done, sill fence is up and the equipment, I'm just ready to go as soon as I get a permit and we could get the okay to start. 
we're going to be on it. So hopefully it will be done with by fall time, you know. A little Thank bit you. Into fall. Thank you. If, if there's no other questions, uh, we would need a motion authorizing the mayor to execute the redevelopment agreement on behalf of the village of uh, Moni. So right. moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Hansen? Yes. Trustee Rakes? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. <clears throat> I'd like to thank everybody for this opportunity. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you, Matt. Thank you. I have not, nothing. Yeah. Any unfinished business? Any new business? Open to the public non agenda items? Anybody? All right. May I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Second. Roll call, please. Trustee Rakes? Yes. Trustee Wilson? Yes. Trustee Udris? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez? Yes. Trustee Horn? Yes. Trustee Henson? Yes. 7.29 p.m.